For more videos, visit for the sake of education.com or support me at patreon.com forward slash Dexter Bells. All right, guys, I'm going to do these two problems at the same time. The first one, they want you to find the tension in each cable if the force is equal to 500 pounds. And the second one, they want you to find the greatest force that can be applied if none of the tensions can exceed 800 pounds. So I'm going to do them at the same time. The first thing you need to do is find the uni vectors. So to find the uni vectors, what you need to do is you need to find the points in ball, which are A, B, C, and D. And put where it sits. So A sits at 0 on the I, plus 0 on the J, plus 6 in the K. B sits at 3 in the I, minus 2 in the J, plus 0 on the K. C sits at negative 3 in the I, minus 1 in the J, plus 0 on the K. And D sits at negative 2 in the I, plus 3 in the J, plus 0 in the K. Now that we have all the points involved, you can easily find all the uni vectors in this manner. I'm going to show you how to do one and you do the rest. Otherwise, this video is going to get too long. So to find the uni vector, these are the four uni vectors they're trying to find. The uni vector that goes from A to B, the uni vector that goes from A to D, the uni vector that goes from A to C, and the uni vector for the force which goes straight up. So uni vector that goes from A to B <coughs> is simply, first thing you need to do is find the vector that goes from A to B, which is B minus A. And B minus A comes out to be 3 in the I, minus 2 in the J, minus 6 in the K. Then you need to find the magnitude of this uh, vector. To find the magnitude of this vector, you need to do the X component square plus the Y component square plus the C component square. So 3 square plus 2 square plus 6 square comes out to be 49 and the square root of that comes out to be 7. And then you can find the uni vector that goes from A to B by dividing the vector that goes from A to B by its own magnitude. And when you do so, you get that the uni vector is equal to 0 0.429 in the I minus 0.286 in the J minus 0.857 in the K. So basically, I divided these three values by the magnitude and I get the uni vector that goes from A to B. So this uni vector right here. Now you need to find the uni vector that goes from A to C and from A to D. All you do is you repeat the steps, but instead of using uh, B, you use C, and instead of using B, you use D. And you can find the other two uni vectors that go down, and this is what they come out to be. The uni vector for AC is equal to negative 0.442 in the I, minus 0.147 in the J, minus 0.885 in the K. <clears throat> and the uni vector that goes from A to D comes out to be negative 0.286 in the I, plus 0.429 in the J, minus 0.857 in the K. And then the uni vector for the force. That one's very easy to find. It goes straight up towards the C. So it's simply plus 1 in the K. So now that you have um, all the uni vectors, uni vector AB, AC, AD, hopefully you paused the video and you did all the steps, you didn't just copy. I'm going to turn the page. And I'm going to do the second step which is multiply by the tensions slash forces because some of them are forces the one going up so we have the same amount of tensions and forces as we have uni vectors hopefully otherwise we did something wrong but we have these three tensions such as through the ones for the cables and we got this force going up so let me let me write them 
tension that goes from A to B, tension that goes from A to C, tension that goes from A to D, and the force. And you got to multiply each one by the univector, its respective univector, univector that we just found. So this one times the univector AB, this one times the univector AC, this one times the univector AD, and this one by the univector of the force, which is the one going straight up, is positive 1k. And when you do that, you're going to get the Cartesian vector form of each of these vectors. So for the first one, you get 0.429 tension AB in the I minus 0.286 tension AB in the J minus 0.857 tension AB in the K minus 0.442 tension AC in the I minus 0.147 tension AC in the J minus 0.88 as a minus 5 tension AC in the K <clears throat> minus 0.286 tension AD in the I plus 0.429 tension AD in the J minus 0.857 tension AD in the K and the F is C on the I plus C on the J plus F in the K is going up so now that we have this table we know that when you add them all together you get the Cartesian vector C or I plus C or J plus C or K because this is equilibrium so now you, you can uh, see, easily see hopefully, that you can build three equations very easy by adding the i's together, the j's together, and the k's together. So i. The i tells us that 0.429 tension AB minus 0.442 tension AC minus 0.286 tension AD plus 0 is equal to 0. I'm not going to write the plus 0. So we're going to do the same thing for the J minus 0.286 tension AB minus 0.147 tension AC plus 0.429 tension AD is equal to 0. And the K tells us that 0.857 tension AB, that's minus 0.885 tension AC, minus 0.857. Uh, tension AD plus F is equal to zero but I'm gonna write the F as negative F on the right side and as you can see they're all negative so we could just make them all positive in this equation so now that we we have uh, the system of equation as you can see we have four variables we got this variable F that I'm gonna show you how to use because I'm doing these two problems at the same time so don't worry <coughs> The only thing that I, I ask you to, to notice is rewrite these equations, but replace tension AB for X, tension AC for Y, and tension AD for C. And this is just so, so it's easier on the eye as I do the algebra to solve this problem, which I'm going to do, don't worry. So let me turn the page. Let me turn my notes. So I'm gonna, there's many different ways of solving a system of equations, as you know, and using the methods I usually use, but I'm trying to mix them up. That way I practice and they're all fresh in my head. And for this method, I think, I think the easiest method and the most systematical to use is the method of matrices. 
So basically, I'm going to build a matrix and I'm going to find the determinant and then I'm going to build different matrices for each variable and find the determinants. And if you know how to do this, you know that this is the easiest way to go. So first you need to find the main determinant. For that, you need to build a matrix <coughs> with all the uh, values that are on the left that we just found. So basically, I'm going to use I'm going to use the values that are not on, on the left of the equal sign, all the coefficients on the left of the equal sign. So what are those values? Are 0 0.429 minus 0.442 minus 0 0.286 minus 0.286 minus 0.147 Point four two nine point eight five seven point eight eight five and point eight five seven. So that's the matrix that we built. So to find the determinant, what we need to do is we need to rewrite the first and second column. First column point four two nine minus point two eight six point eight five seven right out of space and minus 0.442 minus 0.147 and 0.885 hopefully your numbers are prettier than mine so to find the determinant this is what you need to do you got your positive diagonals so 0.429 times negative 0.147 times 0.857 the second positive diagonal is minus 0.442 times 0.429 times 0.857 and the third positive diagonal is negative 0.286 times negative 0.286 times 0.885 and that will give you a value and then you got your negative diagonal I plug it all in in my calculator and you get negative 0.857 times minus 0.147 times minus 0.286 minus 0.885 on. This is the first negative diagonal. The second negative diagonal is minus 0 0.885 times 0 0.429 times 0 0.429. And the third negative diagonal is minus 0 0.857 times minus 0 0.286 times minus 0 0.442. And you got to add all those six values together. And you're going to get that the determinant is equal to minus 0 0.451. Now the problem becomes much, much easier. Now that you have the main determinant, then you need to build a matrix for each of the values, the x, the y, and the z. So the determinant for the x can be found by doing this. You're going to rewrite the same matrix that you wrote, the original matrix, but you're going to replace the first column because this is the x values. The first column, you're going to replace it by the values on the, the coefficient on the right side of the equation. So that will be 0, 0, f. And this is minus 0 0.442, minus 0 0.147, 0 0.885. This is minus 0 0.286, 0 0.429, 0 0.857. And then you're going to do, you're going to find this determinant, just like you find the determinant before by rewriting the first and second column, which is 0, 0, F minus 0.442, minus 0.147, and 0.885. But this one's much easier because it has a lot of zeros. So the first positive diagonal is zero. There's a zero. The second one you can find is negative 0.442 times 0.429, and the third one's a zero. And then we got the negative diagonals, same case. We got one, which is a minus f times minus 0.147 times minus 0.286 but this is zero and this is zero so when you add the two diagonals that actually have a value together you get that the determinant for x is minus 0.232f determinant for x and if you wanted to find x all you got to do is divide the determinant of x by the main determinant and you get that x is equal to 0.514f. 
And that's how you would do this problem with matrices. All you have to do is find the determinant of y. Basically, you're going to be, re this is a matrix. I'm going to write it just in case somebody's not getting this. 0 0.429, negative 0 0.286, 0 0.857. But now it's y, so the second column is 0, 0, f. And this is minus 0 0.286, 0 0.429, and 0 0.857. So basically, you find the determinant just as I did the first two. And you get that the determinant for y is 0.226f. And then you find y by dividing the determinant of y by the main determinant. And it comes out to be 0.226f. Turning the page. And then you find the determinant of c with this matrix. 0.429 minus 0 0.286, 0 0.857, 0 0.442, minus 0.147, 0 0.885, and the last column because it's the C, 00F. And when you find this determinant the same way I did the first two, you get that this determinant comes up to be minus 0.189f. When you divide it by to find c, you divide the determinant of c by the determinant, and you get that c is equal to 0.420f. <clears throat> so let me write the values x, y, and c, which are tension a, b, a, c, and a, d, respectively. So x is 0.514f, y is 0.226f, and c is 0.420f. So as you can see, we can sort them, which one's bigger, which one's smaller. So this is good. So let's do the first problem first which is if f is equal to 500 pounds find the tensions of each one now remember i replaced before tension a b tension a c and tension a d so for the first problem let's do it number one tension a b if the force is 500 pounds, all you do is replace the 500 for the F and you multiply by the coefficient and you get that the tension AB is 257 pounds. Tension AC is 113 pounds and tension AD is 210 pounds. Simple. And then for the second problem, so that's the solution for the first problem. For the second problem, Maximum tension cannot exceed 800 pounds. So what you need to do is we need to find which one holds the maximum tension. And that is obviously AB because the coefficient is bigger and they all have the same um, F. So if tension AB is the biggest, tension AB is bigger than the other two, which is tension AD and then tension AC. Then tension AB is equal to the maximum tension, which is 800 pounds. If tension AB is equal to 800 pounds, and you know that tension AB is equal to 0.514 times the force, you need to solve for the force simply by dividing 800 times 0.514, and you get that the maximum force that can be applied to the system is 1556 pounds. A lot of people may criticize me for using matrices, but it's the most systematic way of using this problem. And problems get more and more complicated further in the chapter and further in the book. And matrices is sometimes the only way, reasonable way you can solve them. So I encourage you to practice matrices. So final answer and final answer. And you can practice matrices with me because the rest of the problems in this chapter, most of them are gonna be done by, by matrices. Please comment below if you want me to do any problems and I'll be happy to help. Thank you.